For those of you playing at home, here's our assignment today. It will be due in a group of three. So 721, 722, 723. Those will be turned in together next week. Together. What? Hilarious question. What? I'm turning the. Yeah, but it's going to be in a binder clip over here. Uh, let me get started on a problem and then find it for you. I'll pull that set of papers out right now. I just want to see how this is going to be. Yeah, but if it needs to, you're okay. If it needs to go in a group, we're going to want to put it in a group. Um, do we feel pretty comfortable with lines after our Desmos activity yesterday? Yeah. Like slope and wire intercept and those sort of things? Kinda. Because you know now I'm going to start asking you questions, right? What do you mean? <laughs> who who was that deep slot? Oh, that's not how this works. Xander. Let's say I hit my head. And I can't remember anything. Right? And I start asking you about what you guys did in class yesterday. And somebody shouts out, well, I, I you know. So somebody shouts out. How do you know your name? How do you know your name? Who says? I could just not try to tell fun stories and not try to spice up the lesson, but you know, I like to try to add in some variety. If you guys would like me to just teach like the slope of a line <laughs> is the rise over the run. We set up this fraction with the change in y over the change. And x. We write this equation Copy this down. I'm going to check each paper before we move on. What? <laughs> yep, now you broke Mr. Hudson. Like, which is your best area 
and one of them is probably weaker, right? Like, if you are really, really good at all three of those, like, great, good for you. But most people are going to have, like, one of them stand out as great, and one of them, like, yeah, I'm not as fast. So if we look at the graph that I just gave you, I want you to compare the rates of these four different athletes. And you're going to tell me, speaking, like, in terms of slope, but we're going to talk about their speed, who's fastest and how do we know? Now, again, I'm going to random card. So four different people are going to be asked to give me a speed for one of those people. So if you end up being the fourth person, sorry, you're stuck with whatever's left. So solve all four of the slopes on your worksheet. It's going to take a sec for my dot camera to load up. Actually, I can probably find this. Notice that our distance here, because it's probably a triathlon on the global scale, is in kilometers. And actually not really, just most everybody, like, who's ran a 5K in here, or a 3K, or a 2K, like, yeah, most, like, running things are measured in Ks, because a kilometer is shorter than a mile, actually. So it's easier to, to um, measure it in kilometers than miles, because they're shorter distances. Just cross places. Don't apologize. So Hazel on purpose just pointed out the trap that she wants us all to avoid. Right, Hazel? You, you did that on purpose. The line switch places here, right? So if I make B my blue line, it's this line, this line, this. So this growth triangle goes with B. Right? Follow the line all the way up. So this growth triangle goes with B. Be careful. Computer's broken and trying to kill us all. <laughs> so your slopes should actually then get a label of what? What should be the label on your slopes? What should be the labels on our slopes? If it's y over x, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to tell you guys, but I just thought that you guys would know it. What's the y units? Kilometers. What's the x units? Minutes. So our slope label here will be something, like we'll call it Z, kilometers per minute. Our slope, when we set up Y over X, is kilometers over minutes. So for A, that's last class. 
for A. Be honest, though, for A, the pink one that we have up there, what's our rise and what's our run? What do we see in that triangle? The rise is 4 and the run is 8. Absolutely. So we set up for the slope or the speed, what we're going to talk about. And we often call this M. I'm going to make it red because that's the closest thing I have to pink, really. Yeah, it's okay. Is the 4 over the 6. So can we reduce that mm -hmm. to what? Uh, two, 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 two thirds, thirds, right? Which we could actually see right here, two and three. So that's two thirds kilometers per minute. Or we can actually say what that means is two kilometers every three minutes. Or every minute you travel two thirds of a Kilometers. Is this minutes really? No, it's really fast. Oh, well, they're biking. Oh, I thought they were swimming. Yeah, no, this okay. is biking, it's right? Different. So, like, yeah, it, guys, if you're thinking about running, like, to in a minute, you ran two thirds <laughs> of a thousand meters. So picture 10 football fields, a little bit shorter because meters are short, or sorry, no, yards are shorter than meters. So 10 football fields, tiny bit extra. That's a 1,000 meters, right, a kilometer. But if you're on a bike, and I'm not, like, saying this to, like, oh, my gosh, Mr. Hudson, but, like, I bike over the summer, right, and I, I have an app that tracks me. You can bike, like, 20 miles an hour. Like, you really can. You can go fast if you have a good bike. So they're in a minute. I mean, a minute's a pretty good chunk of time. On a bicycle, they're going two thirds of a kilometer, right? Because this is really two thirds k kilometer per minute if we write it in a different label. So just a matter, like that's not crazy. That's fast, but that's not crazy. It's crazy for running. It would be crazy for running. But imagine how much faster and how much easier it is to cycle than to run. Because you get so much energy from exactly. running. Yeah. And instead, with cycling, your energy goes into keeping your speed, like, fast. Yeah. Absolutely. Bear, um, just because it's the next one, let's go with C, what we have in green up here. What's that speed, Bear? Why? So wait, did you call it two thirds or four sixths or what? Okay, so C we went. So he said we can dilate, but if we look at just the triangle they gave us, rise of two, run of three. So my slope, my m value for C, is also two thirds kilometers per minute, or kilometers over minutes. Can I? I could. It's not next though. Henry, what about B? That we have here in um, blue. It's actually a one-to-one -one ratio. How do you know that? Um, in, if you look, the growth triangle has three y and three x. Ah. Five times by three is a one-to-one -one ratio. So what's that really mean in terms of this situation? Like, what's our speed? One kilometer every minute. Oh, that's nice and easy. We can go one kilometer every minute. Perfect, one-to-one. -one. one kilometer, one minute. And <laughs> Hazel, your card is next. What about D, our orange one up here? Yeah, because we have two and four. So Hazel went ahead and said, well, two over four reduces. Excuse this interruption. Uh, we need all eighth grade band students going on a trip to report to the band group. Thank you. Half All eighth grade band a kilometer going on a trip, minute. please go to the band group. Or one kilometer Thank every you. two minutes. I like the little equation for the calculation. What is the equation? Y equals It is correct. Now, actually, that brings up an interesting, a really interesting thing. Why? Because there's no y-intercept? Just because there's no y-intercept? 
Ooh, sorry, wait. It's not y equals 2x. It'd be y equals 1 half x. Sorry. I'm going to try one more time. You're, you're totally okay. So you flipped it, but we want to take exactly what this is, and that's our slope. So hold on, though. Something seems fishy about this graph. Liam, talk more about that. Well, okay, so they're going, I mean, I, they're not all starting at zero, and that doesn't really Not mean, all starting at zero what? Zero minutes. Or zero seconds. And that, yeah, zero oh, seconds. wait a minute. So that doesn't really make sense because the graph, or the line A, well, well somehow, no, 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 they're no, already, because it's gone to the end, it may have been in reverse, but it's rose any time. Like, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. How is that, like, there a graph well, like that when you have T over there? Mm -hmm. it, 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 it means like, that you would be as well as a swimmer, and I don't know how We're biking. Like We're biking. You know, it means you'll be swimming deep in the void out there. So that's the only possible explanation it can make. Wait. Mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. Back yourself up. Explain what may have happened because if, if we don't understand a try, we don't know what the heck you're talking about. When you swim and you bike and you run. Yeah, you okay. Know. So if D is he, he is right, by the way, just to like verify from the adult standpoint. A lot of people, when they're talking about tries, are swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, swim. Like, I don't know why you swim first because I don't know why I, you I know. Like, well, because then you dry off on the bike and then you can run. But okay, is there a real reason yes, to like stretch out? It's because your muscles get pent up when you get out from. When you get away from the bike. Oh, uh, yeah. If you swim after you run, your muscles are tight. Yeah. And if you run after you swim, your muscles are loose. That does make sense. Swimming's a really good warm-up. It stretches you out. It's really good for your body. Okay, so you swim, then you bike. So explain this graph to us. So, D went really fast by and this one down this way where six minutes go and T and D, and I have no idea how A got there. Is there... Anyone ever watch a try, and um, or like any kind of race, and see somebody that you're like, oh, huh? I never really expected like them to be like like out here racing with everyone. Yeah, definitely. Like mm -hmm. someone whose legs don't work, or like someone who's in a wheelchair. Yeah. You ever seen anyone in like the wheelchair bicycle that actually you power it with your hand? Well, yeah, so it's not so, surprising. Well, so potentially, what happened with person A? is maybe they were given a head start because of some, like, not fair, like, they're trying to level things out. So if you've ever, like, heard anything about golf, there's a handicap in golf to kind of level things out so you, the weaker players and the stronger players can play together, and we kind of make things fair. So maybe person A had some sort of reason that they started them seven kilometers into the race as opposed to at the same start point as everybody else. Because B, C, and D, really they all start at the same place. Yeah, really I'm not saying like a uh, handicapped bicycle slow. They're they're but it's it's pretty tough, man. The exercise of riding one of those is crazy. It's like crazy ab workout, which yeah, honestly really I could probably do right now. Um, but yeah, so there's some discrepancy here, right? They did not start at the same start point, and they did not start at the same time. So this is a difference of seven kilometers. This is a difference of six minutes. But what this helps us then get to is Hazel gave us an equation for one of these lines. When we talk about the equation of these lines, and I'd like you to write this somewhere on your sheet, our equation will be the speed, which is our slope, times the amount of time, plus the start location. Now, the other way we can say this is it's your start plus your progress. Start plus progress. So for A, my Y equals, I'm writing in pink because I'm relating to A. Where does A start? Seven kilometers in. Now, that's actually my constant value. Plus, what's their speed? Two thirds times x, the amount of minutes they've and been racing. Plus t of t plus x. Either way. Does not matter. It, so here's why I will write the b first sometimes. 
it makes more sense to your brain thinking about it that I started and then I progressed. Yeah. But how we normally write it, y equals mx plus e, is I progress at this rate after starting at this place. It's, it's kind of backwards when we normally write it. So you can write it either way. What I, I've realized this tutoring with a student that I work with, it, it makes a lot more sense when I say I started here and then I did this for every minute or every hour or every whatever. Rosie? Makes it easier to think through. Yeah, so if we're trying to solve this, we would have to be very careful to do the two thirds x and then add the seven, not add the seven with the two thirds. That is the dangerous thing that you could fall in that trap door, but we're smarter than that. We know we multiply first. Hazel? I noticed that a and c are parallel. Ah, a and c are parallel. So we can notate that on this graph with lines that with arrows in them, when we notate parallel lines, we literally draw an arrow on both of them saying they are parallel. So here, them being parallel means what? Charlie? They go at the same rate. Traveling at the same speed. So, Correct. man, if I was C, I'd be mad at A. I'm traveling the same exact speed as A, but they got a head start. I'm never going to catch up. Because I'm going the same speed. Now, who might catch up to A? Audrey? B might catch up to A. Why? Uh, because it's going at a faster rate than the speed of C. Yeah, now what will determine if they catch up? How long they go for. How far they go. Right, so right now, this graph has gone up to almost 20 kilometers. Once they get to the truck, they'll run. Yeah, and they still have to run. How far do you normally bike in a truck? Yeah, I was about to say, this is already pretty far. It, yeah, and it depends on the total length of your try. Sometimes if, you know, like your the whole try together might be 10 kilometers. Um, depends on how intense it is. If it's like a kid's triathlon, I would hope they wouldn't be expecting you to bike ridiculously far. What? Yeah, but then running after that. That's, I don't like running. I'm anti-run. I didn't say, like, you're bad if you're a runner. I just said I'm anti-running. I only like running when it's cold. I don't like running when it's hot. I may or may not follow this. Um, you should have... Uh, do not lose this. We're going to need this for 723, which scares me because that's Monday, and that's a whole weekend of don't lose this. So would you please put this away right now somewhere safe, that it can stay in safe for the whole weekend to not lose it because we need it Monday? Hey, guys, did you hear that you need this paper on Monday? No. You, you probably then should avoid losing it. done. I have six more minutes. We're not done. Hey, that's a novel idea. Sometimes I have to check that I'm not going to sit on something. So, way back in chapter 4. I don't even necessarily need you to have graph paper out, but this um, next question is on your yellow sheet for today. So if you put that away, sorry, please get that back out. Um, I've announced this a few times, but guys, when you pick up your yellow sheet or whatever color it is, look and see if it says example from class. If so, keep it out. If it doesn't say example from class, you can always just put it away. But if it says example from class, we're going to use it, right?
Does that just make sense? No. So, if we think back to chapter four, and we're not going to do this. I just wanted us to look at this. We were pretty good at identifying how many tiles are there. And you guys are like, well, duh, I'd seen it because we count that. Yeah, we, we just count, right? So, how many tiles do we start with? Two. 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 How many do we then have in the next set? So we grow by four. That's nice. Great. So then we started checking. How many tiles do we have in the next set? All six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Does it grow by four? Yeah. Yes. We check again. It's got 14. Does it grow by four? Yeah. Yes. So we then were able to graph these things, but now we're able to formalize. Go ahead. Yes, but this is where we're talking about what makes sense in your head. It is y equals 4x plus 2. But what makes more sense is to say we start with 2 and grow by 4 every time we go up. Right? But when we write these in mx plus b form, we just put 4x plus 2 as opposed to 2 plus 4x. So on your yellow paper, and up here, we have these table, graph, and graph. Which student, and don't put it past me, I would do this if somebody wouldn't stop hiccuping, it would drive me crazy, and I might just collect data on it. So student one, or student I, has hiccups over the course of seven minutes with 28 total hiccups. Oh, Student two, when they track the hiccups for a two minute time span, hiccups seven times in the two minutes, which is really not that bad either. Why do you hiccup three times in two minutes? It's average. Okay. So they timed it over a longer span. No, it's not the same amount every hour, every minute. Yeah, it's, it's like so you're delaying. I'm going to give you that. With one, with this table, how much did you take? Uh, Abby, you should come back to us at some point soon. Oh, on a trip with your family. India. Xander. Yeah. Sorry, I picked on you earlier too. Sorry, dude. How could I use the table for student one to figure out his hiccups in a minute? <coughs> Yeah, so we look for unit rates, right? Xander said, well, if there's eight in two, we would stand to reason that there would be four in one because we divide by two and divide by two. Or if we set up this, it's four. Right, okay, so four hiccups in a minute, not terrible. What about student two, Simon? That he didn't start at nothing. Apparently, he came into the class with pre existing hiccups already having happened. No. No, that doesn't matter. To our hiccups per minute, our hiccups compared to the time, that y intercept doesn't matter. So, if we do this division, what is it? 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. And then, student 3, his rate is anyone? 3.8, right? Because this is 1. So, whatever the y is, so, which student one has the highest hiccup rate? Yes, student also, one is getting kicked out of my class for. Stop I found hiccuping. out. I found out. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, because they're annoyed. Hiccuping is annoying. Well, I mean, that's not very nice. <laughs> Um, we're technically out of time, guys. I don't know why none of the other classes are switching, but we're technically out of time. Alex? It's average. 
So over the span of two minutes, they only hiccup seven times. So if we looked at the one minute time span, that's like saying how many pizzas do I eat each week? I'm sure it's not a whole number, right? Like, 